Welcome to the setup tutorial for the XSS tutorial series. In this video, we're going to download and install the program XAMP, a free and cross platform web server pre set up with PHP and databases, as well as cover how to get the web server up and running and create the database for the tutorials. We'll also look at how to add the code provided in the description of each video to the web server and how to view it. This video will be focused around the installation and setup on Windows 7. A link to the XAMP website will be in the description. Okay. So first we need to download and install XAMP. So the XAMP website, the index will have a download section where you can pick what um, operating system you're on. So we're downloading for Windows, so we're going to click on the Windows button. That'll take us to uh, SourceForge and we'll start uh, downloading the installer. Now I've already got it uh, downloaded, so I don't need to download again. And as we can see here, we've got the installer. So with the installer, just double click, it'll ask are you sure you want to run this executable file, you can hit OK. Once the installer has popped up, you can click the next button. Then it'll ask what components you want to have inside your XAMP. I just generally leave them all ticked. Next, it'll ask you where you want to install it to. Now make sure you install this to somewhere you will remember, as you need to access this folder quite regularly. I currently have mine set up in a web server folder on my Draps TV folder on my D hard drive. So once you pick where you want to install it, just hit the next button and it'll start the installation process. At the end of the installation, it'll ask if you want to run it, just untick the box and finish. Once you have XAMP installed, navigate to the folder where you saved it. Now inside the XAMP folder, you'll notice that there's a lot of files in here for the XAMP web server. We want to scroll down to the bottom and we want the XAMP control.exe. When we run this, it'll open up the XAMP control panel. Now from here, we have the modules Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Mercury and Tomcat. We only need to worry about the top two. So first we want to start the Apache. This is, this is our web ser server, which will service all the page to anybody requesting them. Then we need to set up our MySQL, which we hit start, and that'll start it up, and that'll handle all of our database communications. Okay, now we can minimize this control panel, and let's have a look at our web server running. So to access our web server, we can type 127.0.0.1, or alternatively, we can type localhost. Now once you type in localhost or 127.0.1, 0.1, it'll ask you what language you want to use it in. I've selected English and it'll bring you to this uh, control board here. Now from this control board, what we want to do is on the tools side on the very left, we want PHP my admin. And when we click on this, it'll take us to where we can set up our databases. Now we need to set up one database for our server so we can use it in our tutorials. So to do this, we're going to come to the databases section, which we click on the databases tab at the top, and I'll have up the very top to create database. Now, we can create a database by typing in its name. So let's call the database XSS3. And it'll ask us what collation we want it to be. So we want to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we want UTF-8 MB4 underscore Unicode underscore CI. And then we can hit create. And I'll say the database has been created. And we can see it has appeared at the bottom of this list. Now we can click on the XSS3 database. And it'll ask us that there's no tables found. And we need to create one. So we need one table that we're going to use in the tutorials. Which we're going to call comments. And the number of columns that comments is going to have is two. We need an ID and the comment and we can click go. Now to come up with our structure of our table. So we need to name the fields. So our first field is going to be the ID in lowercase. And that's type int. It has no length or value. And we need to set the uh, index section to primary as it's going to be the primary key of the table. And we also need to set the auto increment, which is this a underscore i. If you hold your mouse over it, it should pop up with auto increment. Okay, now for the second field. The second field is going to be a varchar. 
and it's going to be the comment. Now we need to set a length and value for the varchar, so let's set it to something like 400, as it's a nice amount of uh, characters. Okay, that's all we need to do, and we can hit save. Now once it's saved, you'll see that we have a table called comments, and that's our database set up and ready for the tutorials. All right. So now how about we get some code in there? So next we have to look at the look for the htdocs folder inside the xamp folder. The htdocs folder is where the web server dis dishes out all of the files for the web server. So in here you'll have a folder called dashboard, forbidden, image, restricted, xamp, and that'll be it. I've got two custom folders in here. Uh, called one called XSS and one called Exploitable Web Survey. The XSS folder you'll need to create. So you can right click New Folder and create a folder and call it XSS. Now inside this XSS folder I've created several subfolders, one for each tutorial that is required. So for the first one we have the second tutorial. So inside here I have an index.php. This is where you'll put all of your uh, downloaded code, all of your downloaded PHP files. So when you download a corresponding P PHP file, you put it in a folder for the number of the tutorial that it is. So for tutorial 2, you have the index.php in here. Now to access it, we come back up to our web browser, and instead of being on PHP my, my admin, we're going to localhost forward slash xss forward slash the number tutorial it is, so 2, and then forward slash. And you can type in index.php if you like, but it's not necessary. Now when you do that, it'll pop up with uh, the output of that web page. And then you're ready to go. Cool. Alright, now that we have our environment set up, we can get on to learning cross-site scripting. If you have yet to watch the first tutorial, check out the video on the left. If you've come here from the second tutorial, you can return by clicking on the video on the right. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.